StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. We interview Lex Luger's bus driver. It goes about as well as you would expect from a bus driver interview. And it's Lex Luger versus Yokozuna. There is tons of pre-match hype and both national anthems and Savage is out there waving the flag. And, of course, they have the Japanese flag. And uh, Aaron Neville is there to sing as the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, Aaron Neville. Yeah. He's a big star at the time. So it's funny to watch this in one some ways because Vince, of course, is he, he can't find a number big enough for yokozuna's weight i swear to god i'm not joking the match starts and yoko vince says weighs 470 pounds 20 minutes later yoko has gained 130 pounds he's a 600 pounder now (laughs) well at first you know he goes uh lex luger has dropped some weight for this match because he knows that uh he will need speed he's he's 260 pounds and he goes Maybe 270. And oh, then when was they the last to, time Vince talked about how small a main eventer was? Well, then he tries to talk about the size of Yokozuna at one point. And he goes, he's, uh, you know, he's trying to bulk up. He's uh, 260, perhaps 270 pounds. Actually, 460, perhaps 40. He was up by 200 pounds the first time he, he talked about Yokozuna's weight. And then later he added another 100 pounds. Which uh, he was not over five hundred pounds at this point, but he was not pretty. Now. He was he was a big dude. Oh yeah, he was the heavyweight. Now it worked out because the fight was structured. Lex was fighting like a like a cruiserweight in this match. He was floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. He was dodging everything and countering everything and counter punching and hitting a bunch of jabs. And every once in a while, Yoko, the heavyweight, would hit a big haymaker. And it wasn't always a punch. It'd be a urinagi, a super kick, or whatever. But it, it, like it, it, the, the the if you had a what do you call it, the compu box numbers for this. In total strikes, Lex Luger would have been way ahead. But in significant strikes, Yokozuna had the edge. So they had a uh, had a, a good match. It was basically a good 10-minute match stretched over 18 minutes. The, the middle part of this went long, and it wasn't just because Yokozuna had yet to pace things for Yoko to make him work in a way. It just went longer than it needed to. The other smart thing they did was everything that, un, that, that had been the undoing of Hulk Hogan and the title loss to Yokozuna, Lex Luger countered. And... Yoko tries that leg drop the first time, and Lex dodges, and Yoko hits it later for a near fall, and Lex kicks out. And Fuji tries to interfere with a bucket, but Lex sees him coming. He knocks the salt out of his hand. So he's, he's, he's learned from uh, everything, all the mistakes Hulk made and everything that uh, undid Hulk in their title match. So goes, it does go on for a long time, and finally uh, uh, Yokozuna misses a bonsai drop. Lex makes his comeback. Yoko misses a running ass lance in the corner. Lex hits this body slam on the third or fourth try, and the place just goes absolutely nuts. And Lex goes to the middle rope, and he's got that big stars and stripes up. I forgot how gaudy Lex Luger's All-American gear was. Just red, white, blue, gold, and spangles everywhere. But he hits a diving middle rope elbow shot, and Yoko goes tumbling backwards and out of the ring. And he is counted out. You know, I uh, before we get to the finish, I want to put over what a fantastic worker I think Yokozuna is. And he would get tired there at the end. But in general, he was a good worker. And he knew what to do. He knew when to do it. His offense looked good. His selling looked good. I mean, how many of these, uh, someone here in the chat's noting, like, Omos and Gonzalez both try to do the, oh, I'm going to take a big bump, and it looks like shit, but man, Yokozuna knew how to do it. Oh, yeah. And I was so impressed with him in this match, and Luger, you know, Luger was mostly just selling and everything like that, but every time he'd make a comeback, this fucking crowd would go crazy, and every time he would hit a big move, they would go, they were so behind this guy. And as you noted, they worked a smart match. I don't think it went too long, maybe a little bit, but it's only 18 minutes. It's the main event of SummerSlam. I mean, they've been building this thing up forever, so got to put in some time. But I thought it was very clever, as stupid as the ending was. What I did think was clever that none of the announcers even mentioned is 
first off, Luger cheated because the rule was he had to cover up his uh, his bionic forearm. So after he hits that body slam, which speaking of apoplectic, Bobby Heenan loses his mind, screaming hip toss. Hip toss. Hip toss. So uh, the referee is uh, watching Fuji or something like that, and Luger pulls down the pad, and he illegally uses the metal forearm gimmick. What a cheat. And and Yokozuna tumbles outside, and what I thought was what they actually did was clever, but the answer didn't catch it. The ref starts counting, and as everybody's aware, you cannot win the title on a count out or disqualification. But as the ref gets to four and five, because Luger's busy putting his, his elbow pad back on. So that's the first five seconds. He's trying to cover up his his uh, forearm, his bionic forearm. So at five, he could go get the guy to throw him into the ring. But at that moment, Jim Cornette jumps up on the apron. So Luger is distracted. He has to go over and punch him. That's seven, eight, nine. And then by the time Luger turns around, the referee has counted 10. And Yokozuna is counted out. Now, granted, one of the problems with this count out, besides the fact that it sucked, is Luger celebrated like he won the title. Oh, yeah. Even though everybody knew he hadn't won the title. And so he came off looking like a fucking geek. Like he didn't know the rules. He he failed in winning the title. Like he won the match. He got his hand raised. But it was a fucking count out. The, the, evil, the evil foreigner that they've built up on television. He's still the champion. This was Luger's one chance. He came off as a geek and a loser. And I knew the finish. We've been talking about the finish for weeks on this show. But when I watched it, I was like... Who in the absolute fuck thought that this was a good idea? I like, know. I know the idea was, well, you know, we're going to go with Luger, but why don't we hold it off and do the big crowning achievement at WrestleMania? Yeah. And that was the idea. And listen, there's a million ideas, but watching this match, it's like somebody should have called an audible. Somebody should have said, put that belt on him tonight. Because... It's not like we talk about theory not being ready and everything. It was time. The fans were ready for Luger to be the champion. They'd done the bus. I know you don't like the bus or whatever, but it made him come off as a big deal and a big star and a big hero. And they were into him and they were into the match. And then he's a geek. And I was, it was even more mind-blowing watching it today than it probably was watching it then. So he that, failed. Since, since we now know he never did, in fact, capitalize. He never was WWF champion. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? And I think they probably just wanted to save the pinfall, and that's why they didn't do it. But if he would have pulled that elbow pad down, hit that forearm, then hit the big body slam, pin the guy in the middle of the ring, been handed the title... And as he's celebrating, and you don't even have to do it on this show. You could have done the dusty finish on on the next Raw or whatever. But have Jack Tunney say, the rules were that you had to wear an elbow pad, and you pulled it down, and you illegally used your forearm. Therefore, I have no choice but to reverse the decision and give the title back to Yokozuna. At least then he would have achieved his goal. He would have come off as a guy that got screwed. He would have to work his way back. I'm not saying it would have worked. It may have been the same thing that happened with Brett, but that would have been better than the count out. That was a fucking horrible finish. And the real finish should have been him winning that title, becoming the WWF champion. I don't know how much history had changed if that would have happened, but it might have changed substantially. Maybe it wouldn't have changed much at all. Maybe people would have got sick of him and wanted to see Brett or whatever. But he should have, he absolutely, 100%, one way or the other, should have got the pin and won this match. So the Steiners are carrying him around. Tatanka's out there, and the balloons are flying, and Vince is screaming about a rematch. And uh, that's how SummerSlam ends. So there you go. Um, on the whole, there's some, there is it some was good, fine. It was a thumbs in the middle show. There was some good stuff. There was some bad stuff. I have seen worse pay-per-views, but so they can't recommend going out of your way to watch it. This guy here has an even better idea. Like, what? What? What if? What if the referee was distracted by Fuji and Jim Cornette jumped up on the apron with the racket and Luger went for Cornette and they had a tug of war over the racket and in the tug of war, 
Luger's pad got pulled down. So he didn't even do it. It got pulled down by the heel. And then he uses the bionic forearm, hit the big fucking slam. Everybody goes crazy. He gets the pin. And then when Tunney reversed the decision, not only did he get screwed, but it wasn't even his own fault. There's yeah. so many ideas. Better than So many ideas. And this was a fucking disaster. Yeah, the thing here is we watched this on Peacock basically for free. So I think that's why watching it, it was like a fine show. But I think that if you'd been excited for this match and you wanted to see Luger become the champion and you paid 35 bucks for the pay-per-view in, you know, $1993 or whatever, I think you'd be pretty fucking pissed when the show was over. That's probably That would true. be my guess. Zanga versus Lee stands on Lee's chest when she's down, bangs her, uh, her on the apron, pull, um, puts elbow on her chin through... Her out of the ring. You know, it doesn't really matter a lot in 2022, Granny, but uh, yeah. Lee, in fact, identifies as a man. <laughs> Legend versus woman. Perez. That was another NXT. Can you believe the little guy beat him? He beat Legend. A that. little guy? It's now wrong. Roxanne Perez is a man? Yeah. Roxanne. No. no, these were two women. <laughs> you got to be kidding me, Granny. you got to be kidding me today. God. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.